We're back with a blueprint for trusted infrastructure in partnership with Dell Technologies and theCUBE. And we're here with Mahesh Nagarantnam, who is a consultant in the area of networking product management at Dell Technologies. Mahesh, welcome, good to see you. Hey, good morning, Dale. It's nice to meet you as well. Hey, so we've been digging into all the parts of the infrastructure stack, and now we're going to look at the all important networking components. Mahesh, when we think about networking in today's environment, we think about the core data center, and we're connecting out to various locations, including the cloud, and both the near and the far edge. So the question is from Dell's perspective, what's unique and challenging about securing network infrastructure that we should know about? Yeah, so a few years ago, IT security in an enterprise was primarily putting a wrapper around the data center because IT was constrained to an infrastructure owned and operated by the enterprise for the most part. So putting a wrapper around it like a perimeter or a firewall was a sufficient response because you could basically control the environment and it was small enough to control. Today, with the distributed data, intelligent software defense systems, multi-cloud environment and as a service delivery, you know, the infrastructure for the modern era changes the way to secure the network infrastructure. In today's you know, data-driven world, IT operates everywhere and data is created and accessed everywhere. So far from you know, the centralized monolithic data centers of the past. The biggest challenge is how do we build the network infrastructure of the modern era that are intelligent with automation, enabling maximum flexibility and business agility without any compromise on the security. We believe that in this data era, the security transformation must accompany digital transformation. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, you talked about a couple of things there. Data by its very nature is distributed. There is no perimeter anymore. So you can't just, as you say, put a wrapper around it. I like the way you phrase that. So when you think about cybersecurity resilience from a networking perspective, how do you define that? In other words, what are the basic principles that you adhere to when thinking about securing network infrastructure for your customers? So our belief is that cybersecurity and cybersecurity resilience, they need to be holistic, they need to be integrated, scalable, one that spans the entire enterprise and with a consistent and uh, objective and say policy implementation. So cybersecurity needs to span across all the devices and running across any application, whether the application resides on the cloud or anywhere else in the infrastructure. From a networking standpoint, what does it mean? It's uh, again, the same principles, right? You know, uh, in order to prevent the threat actors from accessing, changing, destroying, or stealing sensitive data, this definition holds good for networking as well. So, if you look at it from a networking perspective, it's the ability to protect from and withstand attacks on the networking systems. As we continue to evolve, this will also include the ability to adapt and recover from these attacks, which is what cyber resilience aspect is all about. So cybersecurity best practices, as you know, is continuously changing the landscape, primarily because the cyber threats also continue to evolve. Yeah, got it. So I like that. So it's so, got to be integrated, it's got to be scalable, it's got to be comprehensive, comprehensive and adaptable. You're saying it can't be static. Right, right. So uh, I think, you know, you had a second part of a question, you know, that says, um, what do we, you know, what are the basic principles, you know, when you think about securing network infrastructure? Um, when you're looking at securing the network infrastructure, it revolves around core security capability of the devices that form the network. And what are these security capabilities? These are access control, software integrity, and vulnerability response. When you look at access control, it's to ensure that only the authenticated users are able to access the platform and they're able to access only the kind of the assets that they're authorized to based on their user level. Now, accessing a network platform like a switch or a router, for example, is typically used for say configuration and management of the networking switch. So user access is based on say roles for that matter, you know, role-based access control, whether you're a security admin or a network admin or a storage admin. And it's imperative that logging is enabled because any of the change to the configuration is actually logged and monitored as well. When you're talking about software's integrity, it's the um, ability to ensure that the software that's running on the system has not been compromised. 
and uh, uh, and you know this is important because it could actually you know get hold of the system and you know uh, you could get undesired results in terms of uh, say validation of the images it, it it needs to be done through say digital signature so uh, so it's important that when you're talking about say software integrity a you are ensuring that the platform is not compromised uh, uh, you know it's not compromised and b that any upgrades you know that happens to the platform is happening through say validated signature okay and that, now you have now so there's access control software integrity and i think you you got a third element which is i, I, I think response but please continue yeah so um, you know, the third one is about say, vulnerability. So we follow the same process you know, that's been followed by the rest of the products you know, within the Dell product family. That's uh, to report or identify, um, a, you know, any kind of a vulnerability that's being addressed by the Dell product security incident response team. So the networking portfolio is no different. You know, it follows the same process for identification, for triage, and for resolution of these vulnerabilities. And uh, these are addressed either through patches or through new releases via networking software. Yeah, got it. Okay, so I mean, you didn't say zero trust, but when you were talking about access control, you're really talking about access to only those assets that people are authorized to access. I know zero trust sometimes is a buzzword, but but you, I think, gave it you know, some clarity there. Software integrity, it's about assurance, validation, your digital signature you mentioned, and, and that there's been no compromise, and then how you respond to incidents in a standard way that can fit into a security framework. So outstanding uh, description, thank you for that. But then the next question is, how does Dell networking fit into the construct of what we've been talking about, Dell trusted infrastructure? Okay, so networking is a key element in the Dell trusted infrastructure. It provides the interconnect between the servers and the storage world, and you know it's part of any data center configuration. Um, for a trusted infrastructure, the network needs to have access control in place where only the authorized persons are able to make change to the network configuration. And logging of any of those changes is also done through the logging capabilities. Additionally, we should also ensure that the configuration should provide network isolation between say the management network and the data traffic network because they need to be separate and distinct from each other. And furthermore, even if you look at the data traffic network, you know, you have things like say segmentation, isolated segments and you know, via VRFs or, um, or some micro segmentation via partners. This allows various level of security for each of those segments. So it's important, you know, that that the network infrastructure has the ability you know, to provide all these, these services. From a Dell networking security perspective, right? You know, there are multiple layers of defense, you know, uh, both at the edge and in the network, in the hardware and in the software. And it's essentially, you know, a set of a rules and a configuration that's designed to sort of protect the integrity, confidentiality, and accessibility of the network assets. So each network security layer it implements policies and controls, as I said, you know, including say network segmentation. We do have capabilities of say centralized management, automation, and scalability uh, and scalability for that matter. Now you add all of these things, you know, with the open networking standards or software defined principles, and uh, you essentially, you know, reach to the point where you know you're looking at zero trust network access, which is essentially sort of a building block for increased cloud adoption. If you look at say that you know the different um, pillars of a zero trust architecture, um, you know if you look at the device aspect, you know we do have support for a secure B boot, for example. We do have uh, say trusted platform, you know trusted platform models, TPMs on certain offer products, and you know the physical security, you know plain simple old vanilla port enabled disable. From a user trust perspective, you know it's all done via access control based, via role based access control, and uh, say capability in order to provide say remote authentication or things like say sticky Mac or Mac learning limit and so on. Um, if you look at say a transport and a session trust layer, these are essentially you know how do you access you know this switch? You know is it by plain old telnet or is it like secure SSH, right? And you know when a host communicates you know to the switch. 
um, we do have uh, things like self-signed or a certificate authority based certification. Um, and uh, one of the important aspect is, you know, in terms of, you know, the routing protocol, the routing protocol, say, for example, BGP, for example, we do have the capability to support MD5 authentication between the BGP peers so that there is no, you know, malicious attack, you know, to the network where the routing table is compromised. And the other aspect is about, say, control plane is here, you know, uh, you know, it's um, it's typical that if you don't have a control plane ACR, you know, it could be flooded and, you know, um, you know, the switch could be compromised by say denial of service attacks. From an application trust perspective, as I mentioned, you know, we do have, uh, you know, um, the application specific security rules where you could actually define, you know, the specific security rules based on the specific applications, you know, that are running within the system. Mm -hmm. And um, I did talk about, say, the digital signature and the cryptographic checksum that we do uh, for authentication and, for the, I mean, rather for the authenticity and the validation of, uh, you know, uh, of the image and the binaries and so on and so forth. Finally, you know, the data trust, we are looking at, you know, the network separation. You know, the network separation could happen over VRF, plain old VLANs, uh, you know, which can bring about, uh, say, it's multi tenancy aspects. Um, we do talk about some micro segmentation as it applies to NSX, for example. The other aspect is, you know, we do have with our own smart fabric services that's enabled in a fabric, we have a concept of say cluster security. So all of this, you know, the different pillars, uh, they sort of make up for the zero trust infrastructure for the networking assets of uh, an infrastructure. Yeah, so thank you for that. There's a, there's a lot to unpack there. You know, one of the premise, the premise really of this, 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 this segment that we're setting up in this series is really that everything you just mentioned or a lot of things you just mentioned used to be the responsibility of the security team. And, and the premise that we're putting forth is that because security teams are so stretched thin, you, you got to shift the vendor community. Dell specifically is shifting a lot of those tasks to their own R&D and taking care of a lot of that. So, because SecOps teams got a lot of other stuff to, to worry about. So my question relates to things like automation, which can help and scalability. What about those topics as it relates to networking infrastructure? Okay. Um, our portfolio, it enables state-of-the-art automation software, uh, you know, that enables simplifying of the design. So for example, we do have uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's a fabric design center, you know, a tool that automates the design of the entire fabric. And, uh, you know, from a deployment and, you know, the management of the network infrastructure, there are simplicities, you know, uh, uh, using, uh, you know, like Ansible playbooks for Sonic, for example, or, you know, for a better Citadel and Dell story, you know, we do have smart fabric services that can automate the entire fabric, you know, for a storage solution or for, uh, you know, for one of the workloads, for example. Now, um, we do help reduce the complexity um, by closely integrating the management of the physical and the virtual networking infrastructure. And again, you know, we have those capabilities using Sonic or Smart Fabric Services. Uh, if you look at Sonic, for example, right, it delivers automated intent-based secure containerized network and uh, it has the ability to provide say, network visibility and awareness. Um, and, uh, and all of these things are actually valid you know, for a modern network infrastructure. So now uh, if you look at Sonic, you know, it's, um, you know, the usage of those tools you know, that are available you know, within the Sonic NOS is uh, not restricted you know, just to the data center infrastructure. It's, it's a unified NOS you know, that's well applicable beyond the data center you know, right up to the edge. Now, um, if you look at our NOS from a Smart Fabric OS 10 perspective, you know, as I mentioned, we do have Smart Fabric services, which um, essentially, you know, um, simplifies the deployment uh, day zero, I mean, rather day one, day two deployment expansion uh, plans and the lifecycle management of um, our converged infrastructure and hyper, and hyper converged infrastructure solutions. Um, and finally, in order to enable say zero touch deployment, we do have, um, you know, our VEP solution with our SD WAN capability. So these are, you know, ways by which we bring down the complexity by, uh, you know, enhancing the automation capability using, uh, you know, a singular NOS that can expand from a data center you now right to the edge. 
Great, thank you for that. Uh, last question, uh, real quick, just pitch me. Can you summarize from your point of view, what's the strength of the Dell networking portfolio? Okay, so um, uh, from a Dell networking portfolio, we support um, say capabilities at multiple layers. As I mentioned, we're talking about the physical security, for example, say disabling of the unused interface, sticky Mac and trusted platform modules are the things that to go after. And when you're talking about say secure boot, for example, it delivers the authenticity and the integrity of the OS 10 images at the startup. And secure boot also protects the startup configuration so that uh, you know, the startup configuration file is not compromised. And secure boot also enables the bootloader protection, for example. There is yet another aspect of software image integrity validation, you know, wherein uh, the image is uh, say validated for the digital signature you know, prior to any upgrade process. And uh, if you're looking at secure access control, we do have things like role-based access control, SSH to the switches, control plane access control that prevents the DOS attacks and uh, say access control through multi-factor authentication. Um, we do have radius and tech hacks for entry control to the network and um, things like CAC and PIV support, you know, uh, from a federal perspective. Uh, we do have say logging wherein, you know, any event, any auditing uh, capabilities can be possible by uh, say looking at the syslog servers, you know, which are pretty much, you know, transmitted from the devices uh, over TLS, for example. And last we talked about uh, say network, sec you know, say network separation and, you know, this, you know, separation, uh, uh, you know, uh, ensures that there is, um, you know, a contained uh, say segment, you know, for a specific purpose or for the specific zone. And, you know, this can be implemented via say micro segmentation, you know, just a plain old vanilla VLANs or using virtual uh, router framework, VRF, for example. A lot there. I mean, I think frankly, you know, my takeaway is you guys do the heavy lifting uh, in a very complicated topic. So thank you so much for, for coming on theCUBE and explaining that in, in quite some depth, really appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. Oh, you're very welcome. Okay, in a moment, I'll be back to dig into the hyper-converged infrastructure part of the portfolio and look at how when you enter the world of software-defined, where you're controlling servers and storage and networks via a software-led system, you can be sure that your infrastructure is trusted and secure. You're watching a blueprint for trusted infrastructure made possible by Dell Technologies in collaboration with theCUBE, your leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage.